So one of the things I've been trying quite a bit recently is uh, to find a more optimal way of working and that's particularly around like my editor or my IDE and basically what I use to, to edit code. Um, so one of the reasons I was looking at doing this was because I've been using a 2013 uh, MacBook Pro for pretty much ever. Um, it's been my main workhorse for so long now. It's been a really good computer, but I think over the last year, especially, it's starting to show signs that it's kind of, you know, it's done. It's uh, we need to kind of move on to something bigger and better. So, with that in mind, um, I looked at Windows. Didn't really want to move to Windows. Um, it's much better these days, but it's still not what I wanted. Um, so my obvious option there was to move over to Linux. Now it's not the first time. I've used Linux as a development environment. I've done this quite a bit in the past. I used to do it probably 10 years ago when I, uh, before I moved over to Mac. So today what I wanted to kind of talk about was um, a workflow that I'm currently working on. Now, I'm not actually using this full time yet, this system, but I am using it for some stuff and I'm gradually migrating away uh, from things like PHP Storm and VS Code, mostly because it's really lightweight um, it's really simple to install on other computers as well um, and to be honest I prefer the look of it it's easier on the eyes it's nicer to look at so um, when you're staring at something for eight plus hours a day uh, writing code then you kind of want to make it look nice or at least you know you want to make it um, something that's not going to cause you some anxiety by looking at a terrible editor all day um, so with that in mind, the first thing I was going to talk about was Tmux. Um, so Tmux is kind of this thing where it allows you to have separate tabs, uh, separate windows. You can do like splits, V splits, H splits, these kinds of things. The first thing that we need to do is to make sure that you've got Tmux installed. Now, obviously, if you type Tmux and it comes back with command not found, then you've not got it installed. Um, you can install it through any of the package managers. So if you're on like Ubuntu, you can do apt-get. Um, and just get it that way. But if we start Tmux, um, it looks something like this. Now, it gives you a little bit of extra information. This this thing at the top here, this isn't standard. This is just something I have on my machine. Uh, I believe it's called Screen Fetch. Um, and then it gives you some information about like the OS that you're using, um, the kernel, gives you kind of some hardware specs. You know, this is just kind of fluff, really. Um, but the main meat and potatoes is down here really it's kind of you've got these different sessions so like at the minute you can see this is session zero um, and it's called zsh that's just like the default name and then down here you've got like the user and the, uh, the computer name along with like the folder that you're in and obviously date and time so um, once you're in Teamworks, you can do things like uh, you can still load like say you wanted to load Vim. You can just load up Vim like this and you've got Vim open here. Um, and then if you see down here, like you say, you've got the session name. If you do control B and then press comma, you can rename this. So I could rename this to uh, some project I'm working on. Say if you're running view uh, and you want to run npm run serve, then you've got a couple of options here. So like. The first option is you could basically do control B and then press C and it will create you a new uh, window. Now what you can see down here is that you've got window 0 and you've got window 1. You can actually click on these on your mouse in most cases, um, but we're Tmux users, we don't want to use our mouse. So what we can do is you can do control B uh, 1 and it will take you to window 1 or you can do control B 0. Now don't forget you can remap these to pretty much anything you want. You've got um, a config file for Tmux, so you can actually change all these. These are just um, things that I've kind of ingrained into my memory. So say if we wanted to rename, um, say if we wanted to go to Tmux uh, window 1, and you wanted to rename that, you could do control B, comma, and say you want this was going to be called like build tools or whatever. Um, and then you could have that running in here, say npm run serve. Um, and this is just like a demo view project. I don't even think I've done anything with it. And as you can see, you've got like your build running in your background. You could create another one um, and you could call this like tests. And you could have like, you know, like tests running in uh, the window two. So you've got like your editor here. Uh, you've got your build here uh, and you've got your tests here. Um, now to exit out of one you can just exit that way and it will close the window. Um, 
Another way you can do this is you can, if we go to like one, which we're on, sorry, already, we just cancel this, close this. So we've now just got open uh, our main editor here. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can do control B and then percentage and it'll do a, um, it'll do a split for you. Now, again, you can use the mouse to kind of move this around and resize this split. Or the other thing that you can do is you can do control B and then alt and then left and right. Now it messes this up a little bit on mine, but um, it's not too bad if you just do like a clear that way. Now imagine that I'm doing, uh, I want to build here or even my tests. I can just do npm run serve or I could just run my tests from this side here. And you can see it like this. Now I can, I can again, I can click between the two um, just like normal. Or the other way that I can switch is I can do control B and then press O. Um, it's kind of subtle. I don't know if you can see that, but you can basically see it switching uh, between, between the uh, different panes here. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of uh, how I would use Tmux in a in a sort of very very basic way. So the other great thing about Tmux is that you can uh, have this running on your machine, and you can just disconnect from it. Um, now disconnect is slightly different to kind of just closing everything. Um, so if I do Control B and then D, uh, you can see I'm now completely out of my Tmux session. So I could come out of this. Um, and I'm back to my desktop. If I then wanted to kind of go back in, Tmux attach, and it basically reattaches me back to my previous environment. Um, so this is a great way of kind of putting something down at the end of the day, you can just detach and reattach it. Um, you can also do this with multiple sessions, so you could have multiple Tmux sessions open, which probably might get a bit chaotic. Um, so yeah, so Tmux is great for this kind of thing. You can kind of just work through uh, any project really. You can have like the build on the side. Oh, and the other thing I forgot to mention is you can kind of um, go the other way too. So if you do like um, control B and quotes, um, then double quotes, sorry. So that's like shift two. And then it, you can basically split it this way as well. So you can kind of do um, a few things really. So that's Tmux really. Um, the next thing is kind of looking at Vim. Now with Vim, there's so many different ways to configure it. Um, you can see already that with my Vim, um, there's there's quite a lot of configuration here. I'm using this airline uh, bar at the bottom, which just gives me uh, much nicer information. Um, and I've heavily customized this because essentially what I've tried to do is I've tried to get it as close to an IDE as I can, but still take advantage of the, the Vim stuff. I can put my VimRC uh, file in the description below so you can kind of take a look at that. It's a bit of a mess at the minute because, like I say, I am still experimenting with it. Um, but if I do comma ev, which is my uh, shortcut to get to my VimRC file, then basically you can see like all the settings that I've got in here. Um, one thing I would recommend is when you're starting out with Vim is to not kind of... Uh, just copy an entire VimRC, just take bits from somebody else's and then just kind of understand what it does and kind of um, take inspiration that way really. So how do we actually open a file? So this is pretty much the same uh, with a lot of editors. You've kind of got this concept of you press a key combination and then it brings up like a fuzzy search. Um, so for me that was always control P. Um, and then from within here I can now search for pretty much anything. So if I know I want to open a view file now, I know, for example, in this project, there's only two view files, so that's going to be pretty easy. And then I can uh, switch between which one of these two I want. So if I go to app.view, um, and then within here, obviously, you can edit. Now, one thing you'll notice uh, probably instantly is the line numbers are changing on the uh, left-hand side. And the reason I do that is because I'm using relative line numbering, um, which is great in Vim. Uh, it's quite difficult when you're pairing, so I do have to turn this off sometimes because if you're pairing, uh, somebody will say, oh yeah, you just need to look at that on line 12. I mean, 11, 8, 7, you know, it kind of changes as you move your cursor around, so it's not perfect for pairing. Um, but if you take a look, what you can do is, if I'm on this line and I want to get to, say, where the script tag closes, um, then what I can do is I can do uh, 6J and it will just take me down straight to there. Um, the other thing that I can do is um, I can kind of move up in the same way. So if I wanted to go to uh, where the hello world 
uh, tag is being used. It's it's actually saying it's 13 lines up from where I am now. So I can do like uh, 13k and it'll take me to that line. Um, I can do the usual Vim things like I can do double D to delete a line. I can do U to um, to undo what I've done basically. Um, I can skip um, at a word level. I can also do cool things like I can do um, change within quotes. So I do C, I and then quotes um, and it puts me in insert mode and I can instantly uh, start typing here. Another cool shortcut is JJ and it puts me out of, ins it basically takes me out of uh, insert mode um, and switches me back to uh, normal mode. So as you can see, that's normal mode. It saves me from reaching for escape basically. Um, so if I just do change this, then like say you can just change the text. Um, I'm in insert mode, so I can then just do JJ to get out of it and then undo, undo, and it'll take us back. Um, what other things have we got in here? Um, there's honestly, there's, there's an absolute ton of stuff that you can do. Um, I've also got, uh, like the concept of a sidebar. So if you're on a project and you're not familiar with it, you can kind of do this, uh, and this is called nerd tree. And then I can kind of uh, move through these, you know, kind of go, ah, oh, yes, yes, we need to go here. You know, or we can look at some Babel settings uh, and we can go this way. Now, one of the things that you'll notice as well is uh, buffers. Um, buffers are what's along this top bar here. Th these, are, I guess, are a bit like tabs, but not quite. Um, I'll probably do another video on the differences between tabs and buffers in Vim, but... Um, essentially these are things that are loaded in memory so if I was to do uh, comma H it will basically take me back uh, a tab and if I do comma L it will take me forwards a tab um, the other thing I can do is I can type uh, colon BD to destroy that particular buffer and it will get rid of it from memory so other cool things that we've got is we can do copy and paste so if I wanted to uh, copy this line then I can just do shift V which puts me into insert mode in uh, in a block mode like capital V uh, and then I can kind of yank this uh, just press Y and then I can just press P as many times as I want um, and then of course if I save it with comma S uh, then you that will trigger the build on the right um, you can also see like git guttering on the left hand side which is really useful um, so you know you can kind of see where you've made changes um, or brand new inserts or whatever it might be. Um, again, all of this is super configurable. Now this one's also a weird one, something that you can do. Uh, this one's the Easy Motion plugin. Um, so for example, if I do a comma WW, sorry, comma comma W, um, then it basically brings up all this weird shit on your screen, right? You're kind of like, what is this? Um, so what it is, is this is a way to basically jump to any particular part of your document almost instantly. So like if you look on line 17 from where I am now, uh, where it says hello world, to jump to that, I would type colon N and it'll take me straight there. Um, and then I can kind of just like do delete word if I wanted to, or I could undo it. Um, and this is just like an easy way to kind of move around. Um, so like I could jump to A. Um, if I wanted to just kind of uh, move around anywhere within the document, uh, then this is a this is kind of a, a funky way of doing it. Um, means you can be a little bit more accurate, I guess, rather than kind of having to do this whole um, sort of you know H H H H H, -H J J J J whatever it might be. So uh, yeah, so there's definitely a few ways that you can. Uh, move around within the document. Of course you've got all your usual uh, Vim ways of moving around in the document as well um, which arguably if you get uh, if you've got those down then you don't need a, uh, an add-on uh, like this, a plugin like this. Um, so yeah so that's pretty much it that's all I kind of really wanted to go over is kind of show you like tmux, show you uh, a little bit of Vim but I mean again Vim you can configure it absolutely crazily you know you can do some absolute uh, mental stuff with Vim um, and it does take a bit of learning there's definitely um, a learning curve involved um, but like I say with with Vim I think it's a case of um, a don't try and do everything all in one go because you just won't be able to do it you've just kind of got to build it up over time with muscle memory um, and the other thing is is um, don't try and use Vim just because you want to use Vim. I mean, you've kind of got to have a use case for it. For me, it was that it was super lightweight, um, and I just 
I just actually prefer it. I think it's a, a much nicer editor. Um, it's you know it's got pretty much everything I need um, for editing JavaScript. I can pretty much just use uh, Vim exclusively. Um, but like I say, the things like in PHP Storm, like the refactoring tools and being able to like command click on stuff, you can kind of do that in Vim, but I've not quite got that side of it down yet. But I'll probably do another video on that stuff if that's of interest. Um, but yeah, that's it for today, guys. If you like what you see, like and subscribe, and I'll just keep banging out these videos. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.